Hello, my name is Dan Richardson. Welcome to the Dan Richardson Show. This is the 30th episode where I'm going to review Die Hard with a Vengeance. Now, Die Hard with a Vengeance is probably one of my most favorite movies of all time, and I'm going to talk about it. Also, first off, this is a regular movie. I'm going to be saying things that probably should not be heard by children's ears. Secondly, spoilers, like the little card up front said. So now, sorry. I assume you also read the whole thing, but just a quick start, I'm going to be talking about some touchy issues, and uh, I just don't want to uh, hear any of the uh, whining that will come along with me talking about the touchy issues. Um, because I honestly do not really know any of the real world applications to these issues. And uh, they're not really important to understanding a movie that came out in like 1995 or some shit like that. So there you go. There's your, uh, there's your warnings. So basically, uh, this movie is about uh, John McClane, once again, but ex except this time he has to travel throughout the city of New York in order to stop this person named Simon. Now this script, sort of like all the other John, uh, all the other Die Hard movies, uh, was actually based off of two scripts. One script was called Simon Says, and the other script I do not know the name of. But the um, but sort of like the first two, like um, the second one was based off of a, of a book that is an actual sequel to an actual movie in there's a deep long history regarding that and um uh live free or die hard is actually based off of a article strangely enough and i'll probably get to that uh tomorrow or next time next video but yeah so that's just kind of funny um I'll also probably have to, I'll probably look up the article this time. Um, yeah, so basically, this movie is a masterpiece, and uh, John recruits the uh, help of a man named Zeus, not Jesus, but Zeus, as in Father of Apollo, Mount Olympus. Don't fuck with me, or I'll shove a lightning bolt bolt up your ass. That is Zeus. Yes, and. That is really cool, and the Zeus is played by Samuel L. Jackson, which is doubly awesome, because Samuel L. Jackson is a badass motherfucker, and it's really cool. So John McClane and Zeus have to stop Simon from basically blowing bombs up in, uh, basically, New York, and one of the bomb threats is towards uh, uh, Chester P. Arthur, one of our presidents, our twenty, our twenty-first president. I may have said his name wrong. Uh, Chester P. Arthur, Chester P. Arthur, that's his name, and uh, and it's really fun. Uh, but yeah, and also that's a storyline that you could not do nowadays. You cannot, um, in your movie, threaten to blow up a school, which. Yeah, um, this movie's may not, this movie is may, may not have aged well all that much. Yeah, um, but I still love it, and I think it's, the fact that it sort of tackles these issues, and actually, I, I would say a very mature way, is part of the reasons why I love it. Um, it even handles race. Um, the first thing Simon has, has, uh, John McClane do is, walk around Harlem with a sign that says, I hate N-words. I'm not gonna say it. Um, I'm not even gonna show it. I'm not, like, I'm not Jeremy Johns. I'm not that brave. But, uh, you know, he, he, he wears a sign that says, I hate N-words. And, um, yeah, uh, if you do, if you actually do that in real life in Harlem, you're gonna 
get killed probably a lot faster than John McClane did. So don't do it. And um, this is a movie, obviously. But yeah, so I think it's just sort of interesting and sort of fun. Um, so Zeus basically helps him. And um, one of the black people who actually sees um, John McClane in that sign, he um, he's like, hey, Zeus, do you know this guy? And this is like, do I look like I know this guy? And I mean, look, points him out. And it's just like, well, Bruce Willis is white, so probably not. It's like too soon. I mean, you know, he's a white guy with a, with a sign, literally like a sign, that says, you know. So, you know what it says? I'm not going to repeat it. But, uh, yeah. And that's just very interesting to me, is that uh, this movie actually does really hand, handle, I think, race well. Um, there's a certain point where Zeus accuses um, John McClane, because John McClane's going to, Almost calls him, you stupid motherfucker. Like John McClane does. John McClane says motherfucker. That's what he does. And, um, Zuka cuts him off and says, go ahead, say it. You were going to say the N-word, weren't you? And he's like, he's like, what you going to say, fool? And he's like, asshole. John says, asshole. That's what I was going to say, asshole. You got a problem with me? Did I oppress your people? Have I oppressed you somehow? I know why you don't like me. You don't like me because you're... Cause I'm white, you're a goddamn racist. And she's just like, I don't like you cause you're gonna get me blown the fuck up. And you know, it's good. And like, it kind of handles it well and they sort of resolve their issues through their friendship. And it's very fun. Simon is played by Jeremy Irons. There you go, that's his name. He's played by Jeremy Irons and Jeremy Irons, um, he, he played by, uh, he played Alfred recently within a few years ago years ago and he also was um scar in the original lion king and he was pretty good he's pretty good in this movie he plays um simon peter gruber who is hans gruber's brother and something that i think is kind of funny is that they kind of sound like they're from different countries like you know they're they're doing different german accents which i think is a little bit funny but um also if Simon was not a terrorist, he could have been an actor because he, he does um, a, like, honky-tonk, like, holy Toledo, someone had fun here. And he did, like, that kind of American accent. He does a normal sort of sounding American accent when he calls into the radio station later in the movie. And then the following scene, he does, like, a Swedish accent, I think, when he goes into the Federal Reserve. And, um, you know, this is having a pleasant conversation before you complete with the with like the head of the bank before he completely takes it over and kills everybody it's just like oh cool you know he has a lot more accents than his brother does but i'm sure hans if we had an example of hans having to use multiple different accents we probably would have seen it but yeah it's really cool um they say the f word a lot they, they say fuck a lot and it's um not as much as the last one but apparently, in the UK, um, they they cut a lot of that out in order to get like a, a 15. Which other thing is this ridiculous? Because like we got these, because all these movies were rated R except except for uh, Live Free and Die Hard, or Live Free or Die Hard. That's what it's called, Live Free or Die Hard. And um, I just think that's funny. And. Um, I don't know, I think it's just really fun. Um, it's really nice, It's it has a lot of setup and payoff. You know, um, when uh, the opening scene where you see the store get blown up, the store has a banner that says, um, says back to school, and that sets up, or that sort of foreshadows the school. Um, and there's just a lot of cool stuff like that where um, where, like, uh, um, the FBI, who are a lot more cooler, like, this movie handles the FBI and handles the, the police a hell of a lot better than the previous two movies, and that's kind of why I love it, because this is, like, and it's just, like, thank you, like, honestly, if, if, you know, fucking terrorists really 
we're, you know, fucking shit up, you know, the, hopefully, you know, and, uh, hopefully the, all these different departments would actually work together like Jesus. And I just think that's rather fun. Um, this is, and they, they work together. They actually work together. <clears throat> sorry. And are all like, let's just figure this out. Um, you know, uh, we have, you know, a few hours to find this bomb and they have to run there and, uh, they go to the elephant. They go to this elephant, um, Uh, they go to this park that has an elephant statue, and um, they have to fill ju um, this jug of water in it, and um, and it's just hilarious. And that's where the that's where the scene where John accuses Deuce of being racist. That's where that is, and it's just very cool. It's very fun um, when they go to leave the elephant. Uh, when they go to leave the elephant uh, statue, uh, they just leave the suitcase there, the suitcase with the bomb in it. And um, John is like, wait, hold up. Or no, Zeus is like, wait, hold up. Okay, you get that and play with it. And uh, John's like, okay, go get it. You know, because John doesn't want to have to climb over the fence again. And then once they get back to the Federal Reserve, because, um, because uh, they stopped these shoplifters, John and Zeus um, stopped this stop these uh shoplifters and one of the shoplifters is like look around it's frick it's christmas you can steal city hall and it's just like okay kid throttle down like jesus what what do you think you, what movie do you think you're in and um and uh that's when he realizes like oh, wait hold up and he's like hey zeus what does wall street not have schools and what does wall street also have a lot of gold and that's where the 14 trucks come in and at the and then the very first or in the first scene with john um rick rick uh, walsh is reading off a list of other cases and he talks about how there are 14 dump trucks missing and of course if you paid attention to that scene to even that little simple jargon that little exposition dump you'll hear 14 trucks and then you'll see the 14 dump trucks actually drive past when um, when uh, uh, when Simon is putting the moves on Rick Walsh and uh, John McClane even in that scene that first scene asks uh, what was the lottery numbers that night or you know what was the lottery numbers the day before and uh, you know like you know we every, every cop um, plays their badge and he, he gets Rick's badge number. And um, that's that's a lead into the elevator scene where John kills all those guys in the elevator. And, um, but before that, before John goes into the bank, um, we see Zeus handing um, this, the suitcase bomb, the, the suitcase with a bomb, or the bomb with the suitcase in it to um, these fake police officers. And uh, even, and uh, the big one, tries to just leave the bomb on the side of the street. And uh, the skinnier one who's sort of in charge is like, don't leave that there, a child could, you know, play with it. And, you know, so uh, they keep the bomb. And then at the, and then a few moments later, uh, when John is driving through an aqueduct, because, um, because at that point, uh, <clears throat> Because at that point, um, Zeus went to Yankee Stadium to go do something in, involving, you know, the game of Seven Says. Uh, John McClane goes to an aqueduct, and um, there's a dam uh, where the aqueduct ends. And um, uh, Simon blows that up and make, basically makes a giant tunnel of water. And the only reason that he has that bomb with him is because of the elephant scene. And that's really cool. And there's just a lot of foreshadowing and it's beautiful. And this movie is literally a masterpiece. And it's, I, I, I think a, a hell of a lot better 
than the original Die Hard movie. Um, it fix. Um, Die Hard with a Vengeance does what a lot of great um, sequels should, in theory, do. Now, is Die Hard with a Vengeance one of the greatest sequels ever made? I don't know. That's arguable. There, there are a lot of. There's an argument to be made about literally every greatest sequel ever made, <clears throat> and I think. And I'm. You know, at least for me, uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance is literally a masterpiece, and I love it. And, um, it's great. And, um, so, after all that, um, you know, after getting basically flushed out, uh, John is shot out of a, out of a manhole cover, basically, and Zeus manages to find him, and he's like, oh, hey! And, you know, he crashes down on the floor and gets into a puddle. And, um, I remember... Something that's funny is um, Screen Junkies did for like three videos or so did showed actual medical actual medical professionals how um, these old action movies from the '90s and basically asked them um, what is the likelihood of of um, this character surviving and of course in Home Alone Macaulay Culkin murders. The, the wet bandits a lot like a lot a lot and um and at least according to those medical professionals that did that video for screen junkies um apparently john mcclain could survive the events of die hard 3 um he just have a lot of broken bones and a lot of and a lot of bruises on him but i and i just think that's funny so like when he so, like, when he gets shot out of the manhole cover and lands into the puddle of water, it's just like, he could survive that, and I think that's hilarious. You know, because you think that it'd be really painful, and of course, if you watch that video, it really, it was. It, it probably would actually be very painful, but I think, I think that's funny. Um, you should go check that video out. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I think they only did three of them. They did, uh, Home Alone, both, both Home Alones in one video. They did Die Hard, and then they did the Die Hard sequels. But yeah, and I think it's just really um, good, and I like these, um, uh, and I like um, this movie. But uh, basically, after that little chase sequence where the people from Yankee Stadium, uh, Simon's guys from Yankee Stadium, follow um, Zeus and then end up following John and Zeus once they... Once they meet back up, um, they have they're driving a like a ram truck, and uh, so basically John and Zeus steal that, and then they go and they um, get to a bridge, and uh, they have to sneak aboard the uh, they have to sneak aboard the um, what's it called the you know the ship, the giant freighter that. Simon and them uh, put all the gold in and stole. And it's just like, oh, okay, cool. And, um, so they go and they do that. And, um, they go down and, like, they pull the winch out and they hook it onto the crane of the, of the, uh, freighter. They, they shimmy down it. And, um, ultimately the cable breaks. Because, you know, the boat's slowly going further and further away from the boat. So the, it breaks and it cuts one of the patrolmen, or it cuts, like, the only guard in that area in half, and it's just, like, damn. And, uh, so, Zeus goes to find Simon, and, uh, John, I think, goes to find the gold, and, of course, John has, like, his, his whole arm, he, um, the, the cable cut his, um, cut his arm at, it, like, his armpit and stuff, so he's just bleed, so he's just kind of bleeding out, and it's really kind of cool. It's actually kind of cool looking. <clears throat> and um, he ends up fighting um, Terrigo, who is um, one of Simon's henchmen. He's basically the um, blonde, long-haired blonde from, uh, the long-haired blonde henchman from the first Die Hard movie, you know, Ta uh, Targo is. And he fights him and he, he ends up, and you know, he's kind of getting his butt kicked, but he <clears throat> pulls, but he's able to get his hands on a chain and starts 
whipping him with it. And he's like, you ever see that show, The Adams Family? There's a motherfucker named Lanch on there. And, you know, he's this... And then he and then he kills him and stuff. And, uh, you know, John... And, you know, it's, it's pretty fun. And um, then John eventually gets to um, the... And then John eventually gets back to the air, to the air deck. But before that, in between the the, the Hans, the Hans John or the John Tago fight, um, Zeus does find Simon, and um, and uh, Simon like shoots him because uh, uh, in scenes in a scene previous, um, John teaches Zeus how to use a gun, but he doesn't take the safety clutch off. So when Zeus goes and tries to kill or tries to suit um, Simon, Simon's like Simon just takes a bite of it out of his egg, and um, it's like you forgot the you forgot to turn off the the safety catch, and then he shoots him, and um, and that's really fun. And uh, so John McClane gets up there and uh, isn't able to find Simon because Simon has the code to the bomb. That will blow up at um, Chester B. Arthur Arthur's Elementary School. You know the elementary school that had that has the bomb in it. And of course, you discover that the and of course you discover that the bomb isn't actually real. And it's just like and it's just like wait, if the one at the school is not a real bomb and it's filled with like um, syrup, then where's the real bomb? And he realizes that the bomb is on the on the, um, and, uh, John McClane realizes that the bomb is on, uh, the actual boat, and there's, this is right before he discovers that the bomb is on the boat, and he thinks that he failed, there's this, this scene where he breaks down and cries, and he, you know, his, his arm's all bloody, and he's just breaking down in tears, because he thinks that he's failed the school, and that the school's gonna blow up, and it's just beautiful, and it's just like when John McClane couldn't save the um couldn't save the, the the airplane in season or in the second movie and you know it's just like that is why John McClane is probably the best one of the best fucking uh action heroes ever is because he cares yes he's an asshole yes he sort of has um a bad marriage that you know and he gets strained from his daughter and his son but like, by God, he is an asshole with a heart of gold, and that's great. And I don't know, I I, I really like that about the John McClane character. So yeah, there. So yeah, there you go. And it's just awesome, and it's beautiful. And um, and if you pay attention in the FBI scene, where uh, F, where uh, the FBI is telling John McClane like about Simon, he's like, you know, this guy is known to have, um, headaches, you know, migraines, and if you watch Simon throughout the film, you can sometimes see that he's often popping pills, he's popping, you know, he's, he's taking, very oftenly, because he has the headaches, he's taking the, the, um, you know, aspirin, and of course, John McClane has a hangover for the entire movie, and he just ends up, at some point, getting a very bad headache. And he has a headache through the entire movie, a, you know, a hangover headache through the entire movie. And eventually, once him and Zeus are tied up to the bomb that's going to ultimately kill them and blow up both of them and this giant boat in the harbor, he um, ultimately is just like, hey, uh, fuckhead, you know, talking to Simon. He's like, hey, fuckhead, I got a question for you, fuckhead. You have any aspirin? Because I've had a bad fucking headache all day. And uh, Simon's all like, it's your lucky day. And throws the, and throws the aspirin at him. And the aspirin like lands in his lap and it's awesome. And of course, the aspirin is very important because the aspirin will tell John and uh, Zeus where, um, where Simon is going. 
and it's awesome. And Simon, uh, so they eventually get out where um, that cut on John McClane's arm has like a wire in it from the rope, from the cable. And uh, he just pulls it out with his teeth and it's just, and it probably hurt really badly, but you know, he just pulls the cable out of his teeth and has um, uh, Zeus pick the locks of the handcuffs because uh, Zeus is a locksmith. Uh, although by his shop, he doesn't really seem like a locksmith. He just seems like he, he's a handy, he's, he seems like he just owns a, maybe a hardware store or something. But no, he could be a locksmith and still own a hardware store, if that makes sense. But still, I don't know. I can never really get a sense of what kind of store he owns. I've always, uh, it just seems like it's a hardware store or something like that. Like a small, like, get, has very specific things, hardware store. Which is kind of fun. And uh, it seems like he also works on, like, electrical things, too. So, that's sort of neat. But yeah, um, so, uh... Uh, and in that scene where they're talk where they're hung up on the where they're tied up to the bomb, Zeus and John have a heart to heart, and um, you know John is like you know, well my life my wife left me because you know I was, you know I wasn't such a great guy you know she's in she's in Los Angeles I'm in New York we have a, we had a fight and uh, I just never called her back, and Zeus is like wait hold up you 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 ain't call. Wait, hold up, you didn't have the nerve to call your wife back, and yet you're still blaming it on her? And John's like, yes, I'm blaming it on her. You know, my wife's a very stubborn woman. Have you met her? <sighs> and, you know, Holly, poor Holly, uh, Gennaro, she has to deal with him. And, you know, he's like, and Zeus is all like, dude, you... And uh, once they get out of the bomb, out of that bomb situation... Uh, Zeus is like, hey Joe, and Joe is played by um, you know the the Indian, the heavy set Indian in uh, Dances with Wolves. Well, he plays Joe, in, uh, in this movie, and Joe is just like, um, uh, you know, uh, Zeus is like, hey Joe, give John a quarter, and he does, and he goes and uses a payphone, and he's like. And uh, while John is waiting to get um, Holly on the line, he takes the, some of the aspirin. He opens up. He's like, "Some of a bitch actually had aspirin." And he takes it, and he sees that the um, that the bottle on the aspirin bottle says "North of the Border" in French. And of course, the like the like evil super secret evil place that Simon and company go to celebrate their victory is um is next to like a motel or something called north of the border and it has like a sign that says like north of the border in english and french and it just goes through the the different like lightings because you know it's a neon sign so it's just like oh okay and it's very cool and it's a it's a pretty fun little ending um i like it uh it's not the original ending the original ending was um was simon succeeded um, John, John got completely blamed for all the, all the destruction caused in New York, get, lost his job, lost everything, and just went to Germany and killed Simon, and, uh, I don't know, um, I think I, I don't know, I'd have to see, um, I'd have to see, like, both I'd have to see that that sec, the original ending on top of the actual movie, because you know you don't really, because you don't really get like the full context for the ending by just watching the alternate ending. But the alternate ending seemed kind of fun. But I think having, but I think the ending that we got was pretty good too, and I really liked it. Um, um, also, um, in the elevator scene, the reason that John. Uh, or in the National Registry, uh, the reason that John knows that these guys aren't actually the security guards that are normally there is because he says, it looks like we're going to have a Indian summer. And, um, of course, the and um, Indians, an Indian summer is basically a 
warm and dry autumn. But the but the security guard, who's one of Simon's fake security guards, says, "Yeah, um, they're expected. Uh, there's expected to be some rain and cold weather, showing that this guy doesn't know what an Indian's autumn or an Indian summer is, which is a warm and dry autumn. Autumn being the fall, which I think is just kind of that's kind of a fun little thing that I noticed this time watching the movie, and I noticed every little." Th and I notice details every time I rewatch this movie that just make it more and more perfect. Um, like the previous time I watched this movie back in December, I noticed the the banner on the front of the store. Is this movie the perf most perfect movie ever made? No, probably not. Um, there are some um, there are some little cheesy moments here and there, like. Um, I think the blonde, I think the, the girl who works at the police department that John works at, you know, she's blonde and she has a, <clears throat> you know, like a really, like a really obvious perm, like her, you know, <clears throat> she, I think she kind of overacts in some cases, um, uh, the, some of the other just police department characters aren't really w that well developed, but you know they're side characters. They're kind of like they're kind of like the um, storm chasers in Twister, um, except this movie's you know a little bit better than Twister. But yeah, so this has just been my opinion. It has a thumbs up for me. Highly recommended that you watch it. Um, if I still was doing scores, the first two Die Hard movies would get three out of fours or you know both of them because I, I have similar issues and similar um the my pros and cons are sort of similar with those two movies but this movie would get a four out of four but yeah highly recommended and yeah remember oh also tell me what was your favorite part and also tell me if you disagree with me because i'm sure a lot of you will disagree with me about this movie but yeah so remember god makes you special also, when you're telling me that I'm wrong, please be civil. But yeah, so remember, God makes you special. He loves you very much. This has been Dan. Please be safe. And I'm signing out. Bye.